Hey, we all made mistakes when we started mountain biking. Yes, and here are a few for you to avoid. Right, there's no denying it that these bikes are incredibly desirable, right? With their carbon fiber frames dripping in that gold colored suspension and dropper post, wireless gears, even little computers on your forks and your rear shock to tell you what your suspension needs to do on the trail. None of this is gonna make you faster or give you that fun aspect. So start off with the bike that you already have right now in between your legs, or head over to your local bike shop to help you decide what bike is perfect for you. Could be a hard tell. You don't wanna be spending thousands and thousands and thousands of pounds on a bike that you're gonna only use a handful of times. Well, that said, really, man biking is sick and you probably ride it a hell of a lot. So the same goes for expensive kit. All you really need to get started is a helmet, a pair of knee pads, and some good trainers. You don't wanna be spending all that money on all that gear when you don't know what kind of riding you're gonna be doing because when it comes to it, you're probably just gonna be ending up going on some local trails and you've got a full face, full body armor, you're not gonna use it, it's gonna be stored in your cupboard, and that's a waste of money. This is Blake. Not only did he make a terrible decision when picking the custom paint job on his bike, he also pedaled up a big hill and forgot to take any food or water. This is Neil. Hello. And I knew we were going for a bike ride for over an hour, so I came prepared with some water and a backpack full of sandwiches. Not really, but if I'm going out for a ride of over an hour, I will take some food. You can take energy gels and bars. I prefer to actually take normal food with me, except if I'm doing a super big effort and a gel is a get out of jail free card. I would say don't bite off more than you can chew. Most bike parts these days have graded trails from green, blue, red, black, and up to diamonds. I would try and pick a trail that you know you can ride and get good at it, because some bike parts now have massive jumps and obstacles. They're open to the public, but um, obviously you want to be pretty good and pretty confident of those before you start hitting them. Exactly, it goes, the same goes to riding out there where you don't have bike parks and you go out into the wilderness. There's a lot of trails out there that aren't really signposted certain colors or graded and there could be some big jumps big drops humongous shoots and you don't really want to be barking down the wrong trail yeah i reckon it can be tempting to do it but build your confidence on the easier trails first Riding too far. If you're coming from road cycling you probably scoff at a typical mountain biking ride being about 30 kilometers road bikes are built to cover distance from their dropped handlebars to their skinny tires. They are designed with aerodynamics and average speed in mind. Man bikes, on the other hand, are built for fun. With their wide bars and tires for confidence and control, these wider tires produce more friction with the ground, particularly in wet or muddy conditions. You'll also be either climbing or descending for most of your ride, which on the other hand takes a lot of energy. So for the first few of your rides, Take it easy and don't ride too far. A good, strong riding position all comes from your legs. So one of the mistakes new riders make is riding too low on their bike. So either sitting down or hovering just above their saddle really doesn't give you a strong stance on the bike. You need to stand up nice and tall on the bike with a slight bend in your knee. And if you can ride slightly heel down with your feet as well, it's a really strong position to be in. If you're too low to the saddle and you start riding into rough terrain, you're gonna run out of space and you're gonna start getting kicked by your seat but also you need to be soaking up the terrain. So standing nice and tall gives you a good amount of movement to let the bike come up to you and get through rough technical terrain. Most of the time you want to be riding along with your pedals level so that one foot isn't closer to the floor than the other. Again, it gives you more clearance underneath your bike. But when it comes to cornering, sometimes where there are flatter turns, you're trying to find grip, just dropping your outside pedal means you can get the weight lower and find more grip. Blake, what was the biggest mistake you made when you were starting to ride? It's a big one. Going too big. Too soon. I went too big all the time. I did that as well. Yeah. Tried to go fast everywhere and fall off all the time. <laughs> I once tried to do a massive jump, just trying to be brave, and I just came up short and smashed my face in. You know, I grazed on my face. Oh. Yeah. Anyway, let us know in the comments down below what is your biggest mistake you've done and if you have done any of these mistakes. And if you're new to mountain biking, don't make these mistakes. And subscribe.
Zehleier.